In today's video, we're gonna put barbed wire and electric fencing head to head. This extreme scientific testing, I hope you're amused. Here goes nothing, is going to determine what happens when buffalo touch an electric fence. Typically how an electric fence works is the ground carries moisture. Well, so does our body. When you have a hot wire like this and you touch it, that circuit continues all the way through your body that carries moisture, which conducts electricity, all the way to the ground and that connects the circuit. That's what creates the shock. So what happens when you're in a drought and there's no moisture in the ground? Now that is the reason why every other wire is hot and ground. This ground wire goes deep, deep, deep into the ground where it carries moisture. The top surface of the ground, when you're in a drought, it's not gonna carry as much moisture. But if you drive a rod really deep down into the ground, it's always gonna have some level of moisture and that's what this wire is connected to. If you know a little bit about electricity, you'll know if you touch it, an AC current, it will kind of grab onto you and it's hard to pull away. If you've ever touched a light socket or anything like that, you'll know that to be true. So if this works like a light socket and it grabs onto you, can it hold onto the buffalo and electrocute them? Well, actually it could if it weren't for a key feature that electric fences are built with. This is called an electric fence tester. If I touch this to this fence right now, it will tell me when it is shocking. Let's find out what happens. Electric fences are designed to pulsate. And the reason for that is just what we said before. Electricity wants to grab you, wants to pull you in. But if it pulsates, it gives you opportunity to let go. It shocks you, but then it turns off, you can pull away, and then it shocks again when you're not on it. moths took over. They took over the entire box pretty heavily and so we cleaned all that out and I burned it and that way hopefully it kills all the wax moths and kills any mites or anything like that. So when we put this on the new hive we don't have the same issues. So now that we've determined that the electric fence really isn't going to kill a buffalo, there isn't really any way that that electric fence is going to grab on to that buffalo and it to be able to kill it. What about if it injured it? What if that fence was on there and it shocked so hard that that buffalo was injured to the point to where it could have issues? Getting shocked by an electric fence, it's kind of like getting stung by one of these bees. It's not gonna kill you, but it sure is gonna hurt. Beautiful comb. Well, I didn't get stung this time. Last time I did, and it sure didn't feel good. Because it's late in the season, we wanna give them a little bit of a head start. So this is sugar water. It's got a little screen on the top of this bucket. Now they can crawl all the way up to that hole and suck on that sugar water and start drawing comb. So I guess you could say there is one major drawback to electric fence. What is that? Well, it's electric. You gotta have a power source. You gotta have power coming in and you gotta worry about if the electric fence is going to stay running. But not so with barbed wire. You put up barbed wire, no electricity to it, it just works. These barbs on here are ultra sharp and when the animal pressures up against it, they hit that barb and it doesn't feel good. So the idea is that they back away and they leave that fence area alone and they wanna stay on this side and not go over there. But there's many different kinds of fence, kinda like the one for this garden. So why just narrow it down to barbed wire and electric for buffalo? I've created an interesting predicament. I pinned all this up and no gate out. I guess it's time to cut a gate. Well, it's enclosed enough to hold chickens. Not done yet. Still need to straighten up some of these panels, but it's enclosed. 
You want to see if the chickens like it? I think it's working out. So there's multiple different fence types, but the two most common are barbed wire and electric fence when it comes to controlling bison or buffalo. There are a few really good reasons why I use electric and not barbed wire. Here's one of them. Remember how I said this barb is really sharp? You can see here, if I were to push my finger on that, I would cut myself and it would bleed and it would hurt. I wouldn't want to do that, right? And neither would you. So this is is a piece of buffalo hair. We find these pieces laying out in the field every spring. They shed their winter coat and get ready for summer. But this will give me a really good demonstration of the difference of barbed wire and hot wire on buffalo. Now, if I were to take and lean against this barbed wire fence, just like this, I'm starting to get poked. But the wires, as you can see, are starting to bend, right? But I can only put so much pressure on that fence before I say, ow, I want off, right? Buffalo are a little bit different. They have an extra thick hide that provides really good protection from predators. But not only that, they have this really thick coat. If I were to take my shoulder and I were to put it on this barb and put this coat on there, look how far I can lean that wire. Isn't that crazy? There's that much padding against this barb with just their hair alone, not even accounting for their hide. A fun fact about buffalo is their coat this stuff right here is up to six times thicker than a cow's coat, a normal beef cow's coat. You can take a buffalo and put it up against a barbed wire fence and they can put a lot of pressure on top of that fence before they internally say, ow, I wanna get off of this. And what that will do is that will start pushing those fences over time. They'll start reaching over that fence for more green grass or something that they want because like we all know, the grass is greener on the other side, right? So then you might say, well, then what about electric fence? If they have this thick a coat, then they probably wouldn't get shocked, right? You could probably touch that wire and probably wouldn't pass through right? Well, in the name of science and you, let's see if that is true. Well, let's see if it's on. That is 7,100 volts of electricity that is running through this circuit. So let's find out if their coat does anything different to the voltage of this. I'm not looking forward to this, but thinking of making this video, I realized that I had to do it. I hope you're amused. Here goes nothing. Ow! It does shock through buffalo fur. I couldn't hardly put any pressure on that wire at all before I had to back off and it hurt. That means when buffalo go to push on this fence here, they're not gonna push on it very hard before they come off. They're gonna push barbed wire a lot harder than they are electric, thus over time degrading that fence. How do we tell if the fence is on? This. This fence does not look any different. This wire right here is a ground wire. I can touch it. This wire, I'm not gonna touch again. Once was enough for one video, but they look identical. Buffalo don't know the difference either. All they know is when they get shocked, they see that, they say, nope, see ya. They don't know if it's on or off. So if or when the power goes down for a night or two, it's no sweat because they are trained to see this as danger. They don't want any part of it. So everyone who raises buffalo, if they don't have electric fence, are their buffalo gonna get out by pushing on that barbed wire, not feeling the barbs and then just running? Not really, because I know a lot of guys who run just barbed wire with buffalo and they don't have issues. The difference for me is there's more maintenance when it comes to barbed wire because they put pressure on it and there's very, very little maintenance on electric because they touch it, they're off, that's it, they're done. They don't wanna to touch it again. So what did we really learn today? Can buffalo die from electric fences? No, they can't. Is it going to cause permanent damage? Not at all, it's not gonna harm the buffalo. It's just gonna tell the buffalo to get away from the fence. But if your favorite kind of fence is barbed wire, then go for it. We might just have to arm wrestle later, but I won't hold it against you. We'll see you guys next time.